Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State, one of the highest profile players in college football, using the hashtag, we want to play, and posting, we all want to play football this season. We want to use our voices to establish open communication and trust between players and officials and ultimately create a college football players association. He said the statement was representative of the players of all Power Five conferences. Trevor Lawrence, uh, perhaps the highest profile of all college football players, the quarterback at Clemson, tweeting in part, people are just as much, if not more, at risk if we don't play. Players will all be sent home to their own communities where social distancing is highly unlikely and medical care and expenses will be placed on the families if they were to contract COVID-19. Again, he's trying to make the case that players may be safer in their collegiate environments uh, where they are being monitored in the way that they would uh, on the college campuses than, than many of them might be if sent home. Uh, Desmond Howard is new to our conversation here this morning. Des joins us with Paul and Booger and Dan again if you were just joining us. And Desmond, I, I will give you the floor to begin as we've not yet heard from you this morning. As you've seen all of this developing over the weekend, the conversation about the real possibility that the college football season could be called off. What's your reaction this morning? Well, Greeny, it's the news that we all knew was a, was possible, but we never wanted to see it happen and to watch it unfold the way it did um, this weekend. I tell you, it was really, it was kind of, it was sad because about a week ago, we got the schedules. And at that point, we're looking like, okay, there's hope. We're going to have a season. It's going to be an altered season, but yes, we're going to have college football. But then something happened, Greeny, over the weekend, which I believe it comes down to whatever they heard from the medical experts possibly dealing with the long-term effects that no one knows about with this um, COVID-19 and what those ramifications could potentially be. I think that's what started, everyone's saying it started with the Big Ten. That might have been what started Kevin Warren and the presidents of the universities in the Big Ten of that conference to say, you know what? We need to either cancel the season or at the very least postpone it. Now, I went to bed and we had the, the We Are United was one group and We Want to Play was a different group. But now it just seems like those two groups, Greeny, has also come together and formed one group. They're trying to form an association so they can have their needs, the needs of the players addressed and so they can have a seat at the table. So depending on what happens, whether it's canceled, whether it's postponed, but moving forward, I believe that if they do come together and form an association, that could be the silver lining that can come out of this pandemic because at that point, they will have a seat at the table which the players never, ever experienced before in college football. Paul, let me come to you here. Uh, Desmond brings up an interesting point. I believe it was last Thursday that the Big Ten released its schedule for the upcoming season. And according to our reporting, and Heather said this morning, 36 hours later, early Saturday morning, they're on a conference call talking about canceling the season. That, that feels, um, those two things feel obviously incongruous to me. What is your reaction to that? They are. I think the Big Ten has been trending toward this for some time. R remember, when all the five commissioners were talking about how collaborative they were. Well, on July 9th, Kevin Warren and the Big Ten went ahead and said, you know what? Uh, we're going uh, conference only, and it took quite a few weeks for everyone else to join. So that's the concern, uh, and the Pac-12 will go along with the, 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 the Big Ten. Uh, the Pac-12 has always been joined at the hip, as everyone knows, with the Rose Bowl and everything else. But the other three are where the action is right now, and, and I, I think there is still a lot of infighting going on. Can the SEC, Big 12, or ACC go it alone? And, and the feeling really is that they probably can't. They're, they're, they're going to try. They're going to get a lot of encouragement. But, but, but the real disconnect here is just what, what De Desmond was talking about, the players. I, I know that you hear conference commissioners and ADs and coaches talk about, we want to listen to the players. We're having thoughtful conversations. But the idea of the players forming a union scares every administrator to death. They, they don't want to deal with it. Mark Emmert has, tr has tried not to deal with it for many, many years, which is why we still don't have NIL. And the, and the idea that everyone can come together a week ago, remember, Pac-12 players wanted money. They wanted this. They wanted that. Then everyone else started joining. But that's the thing to keep your eye on. And I'm not suggesting that, that the conferences are going to fold their tent because they don't want to deal with the players, but they don't want to deal with the players. Yeah, no, I think that's been part of this from the beginning, financially and otherwise. Booger, let me go back to the posts from the players. Someone like Justin Fields or, or, or Trevor Lawrence or any of the players just simply saying, we want to play. How important should that be? Should that be taken into consideration? Booger. 
Well, Green, I think you have to take it into consideration because those are the guys that are actually going to be out there on the field. And, and I applaud Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields and any player around the country who, who, who has the thought process to say, let's come together. Let's put all of our voice together so we can centralize and, 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 and get everything that we need and things that we want from health care, from universal testing, et cetera, et cetera. But Green, at, at the end of the day, here's the issue. Again, you're dealing with amateur athletes, and unfortunately, these amateur athletes haven't had a seat at the table before now, and I doubt they're going to give them a seat at the table at this point during this pandemic. I understand we want to hear from you, but there's a distinct difference between the NFL and the NCAA. See, the NFL already has a players' union. They've been fighting for these players, past, present, and future, for a long, long time, Greeny. The NCAA athlete, they have been the amateur athlete, and people have been making decisions for them for a long time. And right now, the thing that scares these presidents, that scares these ADs, is the fact that we, as a, as, as a group, the presidents, the ADs, we have to make a decision, and we're liable for it. We have to, we're the ones that are, that are going to be culpable and responsible for it. And Greeny, think about this. There's an offensive guard at the University of Tennessee named Trey Smith. He is the best guard in America. Well, guess what? He suffers from blood, blood clots and, and, and a blood issue. Now, what happens if the best guard in America goes out and plays and COVID affects him in an adverse way? I understand he can say we want to play. He can say all these different things. But at some point, when everything hits the fan, the University of Tennessee will be liable. And just like what happened in the NFL with the concussion lawsuits, when liability is put on one side, there are billions, that's with the B, billions of dollars that had to change hands, and these college institutions do not. They are afraid. Paul talks about they're being afraid of a, of a players' union. Well, I'll tell you what they're even more afraid of. They're more afraid of every institution having to deal with kids that are going to have billion-dollar lawsuits, and that is at the crux of the issue that we're dealing with and why the college football season is teetering on the brink of being postponed. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.